Hi students. Now we're going to be moving on to the traditional color wheel and this is project 3A. So we're going to be using one sheet, full sheet of watercolor paper. We're going to have an assortment of paint brushes for this and your Liquitex paints. And you're also going to be using your compass and you'll need your ruler. Uh, we'll, what we're going to be doing is creating a traditional color wheel and then we're going to be mixing some tertiary hues, uh, which are opposites with opposites on the color wheel. And then we're going to be painting a sphere using values and hues and mixing primary hues. Uh, we're going to be doing a value scale of that. So right now I, I, I have a color wheel here. I ordered this online. You don't have to have this. It does come in pretty handy, but you can also be looking at this online um, and the images of it. This is the 12-step traditional color wheel uh, created by Johannes Itten, I-T-T-E-N. And so we're going to be uh, working off of this. And the way that we're going to get started is on our paper, we're going to be creating an outer circle that's nine inches in diameter. And you'll be able to work off of the, this handout that I have in Google Classroom. There's three pages to this. Uh, but I'm going to talk you through measuring it in the video, and I can post any other steps in Google Classroom. Uh, because in your handouts, you don't have all the measurements. The measurements are on a sample that I've created that I usually have posted in the classroom for students to refer to. But since we're online now, um, I will be posting those instructions for you. So what we're going to be doing is creating the color wheel on our paper. Let's set these off to the side here. Now the outer diameter of our circle is going to be nine inches. And the inner circle is going to be four inches. So I'm just going to measure this across to show you that this is 9 inches and then on the inside the diameter is 4 across diameter. So I'm going to, um, to create this, I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to take my compass and what I, I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to be putting the point of the compass where the first inch begins here and then I'm going to get that to four and a half inches because 4.5 times 2 is 9 inches. So that's going to be equaling our diameter here. Okay, so see? Right there. And so my point, you can put this anywhere in your paper, but I've shifted mine to the right. You don't want to, actually, you don't want to put it anywhere in your paper. You want to shift it off to the left a little bit because you're going to be needing this area here for mixing your primary hues to create your value scale. I'm going to get into that once I get you started on this. So what I like to do is get everything graphed out on my paper so that I'm just ready to start painting. So um, if you really want to know how far I am from the edge here, I put my point about eight inches away from the edge of the paper. Let's see if I'm about eight inches there as well. It's about nine, so it could be eight inches your point from that edge and nine or eight from this edge. So now we know how far from the edge of the paper and you want that because you're going to need this space over here for writing down your mixtures of paint all the way around. All right, so I'm going, I have this and I'm going to press down. I'm keeping this point engaged in the paper with the paper and I'm just drawing this around. So you know, you, you can see that I'd already drawn this ahead of time. This is just so that I can uh, find my way a little bit quicker during a demonstration. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the center diameter, which is going to be two inches because two times two equals four. So same thing again got my ruler, I have my point there, and I'm going to start making it smaller. Okay, so our point of our compass is there, and then the pencil is right on two inches. So I'm going to take this back, put my point where it was before of my compass, 
and now I'm going to draw the center of my color wheel. There it is. Next step, we need to divide this in half. So if I take my ruler and I get it right on that, where my, the hole was, the point from my compass, and you want it just a little bit off of that point so that you're not going off to the side of it. You want to go right through the center. So I'm going to draw my line and I can stop right there and then I can start again here so that you're not dividing up the center here. Next step is I'm going to take the ruler again and I'm going to be measuring so that I can divide this up into equal spaces here so that we can get some of these uh, shapes directly across from each other because we're going to be mixing complementary colors that need to be directly across from each other on the color wheel. So you can see right here on this color wheel that I purchased, we have yellow and purple across from each other. And so that's why we're measuring this out. You don't want to just guess. All right, so the measurement is going to be, it's a little, you know, it's not going to, all of these uh, divisions aren't going to be perfect, but we're going to get it as close as we can. So what we figured out is that it is about, let me get back to where I'm supposed to be here. It's, it's two, two quarters, two and a quarter inches. Uh, but it's just a little bit larger, so I'm going to have the point of my compass, uh, the little needle part of it, just on the outside of that first line on your ruler, and then just a hair past uh, two and a quarter here. So I've got just a little bit larger than that. Now, if you have a ruler that has a lot of divisions on it, that would be two and five sixteenths of an inch. All right, so next step will be I'm going to put the point of my compass right here where that line, I mean, it could be over here, but I'm just starting right here and I'm going to mark this. Now I'm going to move it and I'm going to keep repeating that. Now, I had already marked some here beforehand, so they're kind of popping out a little bit, and I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Get right on that, where that intersects. And so you can see it's just a little bit off right there, but that's okay. We're going to keep moving here. And there should be 12 of these all together. So next step, I'm going to take my ruler once again. And I'm going to line it up with those marks that I just measured out with my compass. And now I'm going to draw a line, stop, skip the inner circle, and draw another line and keep going with this. that little X there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's what we want. So the next step is what I, that I want you to do is in this handout that I have here, and also this is a completed one. It looks a little crazy messy right now, um, but this is just your notific you're, you're taking notes here and you're writing this down so that you can see what colors you're mixing here. Uh, or the other thing that you could do is just follow this and you could be writing 
down in here that this is going, let's say this is your violet, and then across from that, you want that to be your yellow. And then you're going to shift over here. This is your red violet. I have mine all written up the way it is because that was my instructional color wheel. This is violet. And then red. Oh, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Red violet. Let me erase that. Glad I caught myself there. Cadmium red. And then we've got our red orange. And in your handout, I have these all labeled as to whether they're secondaries and or tertiaries and primaries. And I discussed that all in the PowerPoint presentation that I already gave you. So when I start talking, I start getting losing my spot. So maybe I should just be quiet. So I'm just gonna go go around and check this. I've got my violet, red violet, cadmium red, red orange, orange, yellow orange, yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, blue, and blue violet, violet. Perfect. So now when you start mixing these, if you wanted to start painting this right away, you could be referring to this handout that I have you, and I've given you instructions in this handout. So um, I'm just going to write this right side up so that I can see it easier. I was just putting that in there quickly. Okay. We're going to, let me turn this to get to my yellow. Here's my yellow, my primary. And that's going to be, be just your yellow right out of the tube. So here's my cadmium yellow light. And we're just going to be putting that down onto the palette and applying that into here. Then the next one, the directions will show you, cadmium yellow with some phthalo green and a small amount of white. And what you'll be needing to do here is like, it's very easy for, you know, I say with some phthalo green, just add a little bit of the phthalo green first and then a small amount of white, very tiny amounts so that you can always adjust the color and add, a, because if you add too much, then you're stuck with that color and you're having to add more of the other hues or more white or, you know, more, it's just, it gets to be a huge amount of paint. So follow this and you want to be con comparing these colors to the traditional color wheel that you're looking at online. So we're looking for yellow green and that means it's more yellow than green. Then when we get to the green color, that's a secondary color, and then we're gonna be using the phthalo green with yellow and a small amount of white. So you start out with the green, you add a little bit of yellow to it and a small amount of white. And then, and then so on. So you just want to go around here and fo follow all of this. All right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some mixing in a little bit, but I want to show you how to set up the rest of this because I don't want to be working on trying to do any of this while this is wet in my demonstrations. So the next area that we're going to be working in, and in your handout you'll see it on here. So just imagine that this piece of paper is your watercolor paper and we're making it bigger. Over to the right, this is going to be your primary hues value scale with neutrals added, meaning we're going to be adding white to these mixtures, to these hues, your primary hues, and then we're going to be adding black to them. So we've got our red, this is our red right here primary, yellow, and blue. And what we're doing is we're adding a little bit of white to each of these. So the way that I've measured this out is that I have three across and seven down. And actually one, two, three, four, five, six, yep, seven down. And each of these are one by one inch squares 
with a half an inch between them vertically and horizontally. And I have the right here the way I measured this out. These look more like rectangles in the handout, but it's going to be a lot easier to be measuring this way. So I started out an inch from the top and I marked this off doing one inch and then I measured a half an inch. Then I did one inch, half an inch, one, half, one, half, and so on. And then I went across and I had a straight line. I created a straight line here as well. And that straight line, after I measured one inch here, I brought it down right here, and this is 10 inches. So this ends at 10 inches here, in vertically. And then across, it's four inches. So in here, that's four inches across. So what I did going across, I measured one inch, a half an inch, one, half, one, and I did that all the way across so that I had little dots so I knew where to put my ruler. So you can see that um, I already have some markings here and across this way. So I measured them going this way, vertically, and then horizontally across. So I have all my marks here. You can see how I drew these lines here too. When I, when I measured across this way, I drew a line going all the way down, 10 inches again. So I drew that all the way down. I did that here as well, here, here, and here. And then I was able to measure across and then down and across. So I, I made like a big rectangle that was basically four inches width and then 10 inches length and then I divided them up into these one two three one one inch squares and then seven down one inch squares with a half an inch in between I know I'm repeating myself but I'm trying to make it as clear as I can to you without confusing you too much so what I'm going to do now is I'm drawing I'm creating these cubes I'm going to finish this up So that's our space in between here. And then we've got another measurement here. And I'm just creating those little squares for you to paint in. So this is a value, this is going to be a value scale like your gray scale was, only we're using hues now. We're using color. And we're adding white to the color to create a tint like highlights and lights. And then we're going to be creating shades, adding black to our colors. And if you want to, it really helps. And it just looks a lot nicer. You can see here where I, I painted all of these and then I erased out the lines. Um, but I like to you kind of erase them out a little bit first so that you don't get confused as to which, which area you're painting or not. All right, so you can use a nice brush if you want to to get, so you're not smearing your hand across your paper all the time to get the eraser crumbs off. And then what I did over here is I, I labeled it. I do want you to label it as your primary hues value scale with neutrals added. Uh, and then what we have here is we're gonna have um, our primaries being red and then yellow and blue. I had four inches wrote, written up there so you, you could see that. Okay, and then off to the side, I have, on the paper it's to the right, but I've uh, written it to the left, so it doesn't matter where you put it, just as long as I see that you're writing that down. Uh, right on this, right across this row is gonna be your highlights, the next one is going to be light, then low light, middle light, high dark, low dark, and this is going to be 
low, your low dark as well, but your darkest, low darkest. So that you can see here, I have this, I kind of started right here where the tints are going this way and the shades are going that way. So we're going from lightest to darkest. So this is somewhere in the middle. And you're gonna see that these colors are going to change. It is, we're adding black to our yellow, so it is going to create kind of a greenish color. And then it gets very dark as we get down into here. All right, I'm gonna, the other, the next thing that you're gonna be doing is you're also gonna be doing translucent washes. So you wanna leave an area down in the corner here. And I'll go over what washes are. And on the back side of your paper, we're going to be mixing tertiary hues, uh, opposites on the color wheel together, opposite colors on the color wheel together. It's, uh, you're gonna be setting it up this way. So you can see I have my spheres off to the right of my, uh, my different colors over here, the mixing tertiary hues. And we're gonna be measuring these out in a similar fashion as we did on the flip side with the primary colors doing the tints and shades. All right, so now we're gonna be putting these uh, circles off to the side here because we're gonna be painting these and modeling them to create the illusion of three-dimensional space. And we'll be using that value scale that you did on the other side for your highlights, your light, etc. cetera. And uh, this is about, you know, it could be about a four and a half inch across circle. I don't want you to make it really small because then it's too hard to move the paintbrush away, around that is. And you can measure it out on your, your ruler, just divide it in half. So if this was about five inches across, you know, two and a half inches, uh, you'd be measuring on your ruler, uh, or if it was four, it would be two inches, etc. So I'm just, I put my little point down and I just drew my circle. It's like that just measuring up to exactly where I had it the first time, but that's okay. So I did two of those, and then I took my pencil, let's set my compass over there, and I sketched this in as a cast shadow. And I did that to both of them. Some shadows are shorter than others, and I'm going to have it coming out. So see I'm holding my pencil like that? It's just a little bit easier to sketch it in that way and uh, think about your s the sphere I've already uh, talked to you about contour lines cross contour lines and if our light is coming our light source let's say it's coming from over here to the left so it's that light is hitting your sphere somewhere like this and then we've got the 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 light wrapping around the form. So if you think of this, break down this sphere into cross contour lines. So this is my highlight here. And I'm just sort of develop, um, sketching in these lines and it almost looks like it's a pumpkin. So we're following the form. And this sometimes helps people, now we're getting our those are our vertical lines, these are our horizontal, horizontal lines. And if we sort of do this, it kind of helps people see where the direction of their, either you're using a, in your drawing, uh, charcoal or pencils or even paint, this gives you an idea of how the paint is supposed to be applied going across the form. See, I'm holding my pencil like that, it's much easier, and my knuckles sort of touching the paper as I go along here like that to stabilize my arm. So I'm not sitting there like this, being really tight. I'm up above it and I can be holding it like this as well and moving it like that. So now it feels like those lines go around the form and disappear in the back. So if we had an x-ray vision of this, you might see them on the other side wrapping around, but we're not gonna go do that because it gets to be too confusing to have so many lines on here. So that's how we're viewing that, and then we have our cast shadow. And you can see here our highlight, light, low dark, high dark, 
high dark, low dark. That's our cast shadow. We also have some reflected light bouncing up off the table. Just how I, like I described during the values uh, lecture in PowerPoint. So here we have, this is a better one here. Now I have extras here. You don't have to do this many. Um, some people draw two. I have two on here. You can just do one. Um, you could sketch this out so you can refer to this while you're working on your other sphere. Uh, but these are from other demonstrations that I did in my other classes. That's how I ended up with three on here. But originally, it was just this one. And I chose to use yellow as the color of my sphere. And then what I was doing was I, was adding, I added white to my yellow, or just pure white with the highlights hitting it. And then I went in and I added a little bit more white to the cadmium yellow. And then, we, and, and then I start getting into here. And sometimes you can add, um, like over here, what I'm adding is I'm adding the ultramarine blue and white mixture together. Actually, it's a quinacidone. Quinacidone, it's really hard to say that name, with ultramarine blue and white. So that's, we're gonna be, we could be looking over here for reference to using this mixture to change uh, the values here to create this illusion. And so then we're getting into our high dark here, low light, and then we have our reflected light and cast shadow. This one I decided to play warm and cool colors off of each other. So I went and, and was looking you know, maybe into some, the primary color blue, and maybe adding a little bit of black to that to create a, a shade. And so this could have been, this can be a little bit of my um, value that I'm working with as well, or my shadows. And so I'm going to be showing you how to blend. I'm going to start mixing paint now, but the first one that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do the yellow. And I'm going to erase out where I wrote yellow because I, you might be able to see it since it's pale. And let me just look on here. This is opaque, but I still don't trust it. I don't want to have to do several coats to cover up my writing. And I'm just going to uh, squeeze out. And I have this nearby. So let me just get to my yellow. That's my cadmium yellow, my primary. And I'm going to be working around the color wheel this way. Because since I have the yellow down, I mean, I can, I, I can always go a little bit over here for my secondary orange, my tertiary. Because we're going, we're going into, we have yellow and then we're going up to our tertiary, which is yellow orange, then our, and then our secondary, which is our orange, and then our ter tertiary, which is our red orange. And then over here, I can be working off the yellow, um, getting into my yellow green, and then my green, and then my blue green over here. But I will not be using um, I won't be using any of the yellow over here. So you always want to look to see what yellow you'll be using. And I'm just following all of this, or how much yellow you will. So I'm gonna just lay this, put this down a little bit of it right now. And I have various paint brushes here. And since I'm not painting any large areas. Uh, I don't have really big brushes right now. So these should do pretty well for the color wheel. And I have my water and some paper towels, my plant mister. If you need to use something like a mall for painting to rest on, you can be doing that as well. And I'm going to see, I'm just, sometimes I like to just see how these brushes feel. See how flimsy that one is? I don't know how good that's going to be for this. It's not as stiff as some of the other brushes. So what I have is I have this kind of angled brush. I haven't used that yet in any of my demonstrations. And then I have this small round, a smaller flat, and then a larger round. So let's just see how this goes. I am going to get a little bit of water on my brush. So let's just see, yeah, I got a little bit of water in there and I'm going to add it to my yellow. Mixing the water a little bit and then we're going to start laying this down. 
So you can see, I can, even where I erased the yellow out of there, I can still see my writing. So maybe go around and erase that as you go. You can always write it down here too and not inside of all of these. I kind of did that for the demonstration, um, but I could have written them all down there like I did originally in the original hand, uh, painting that I did right here. You can see how I did that all the way around the edges. Now I can let this dry or just kind of get a second coat on there right now, but we want a nice even surface. We don't want this really messy and textured. Try to keep it nice and flat and uniform. If you get any little uh, pieces of your bristle, your paintbrush, bristles in the paint, sometimes, uh, I think I've said this already, get a little bit more water again. Pull some of that off of the yellow. You can, I have an old pair of tweezers that I use to uh, get those little bristles out of there. Just pick them out, but this dries pretty quickly. I'm usually doing that with uh, the oil paint. So I did do a, a little demonstration for you for the value painting about how to apply the paint. So I, I, you can kind of run that bead of paint along that edge like that and then smooth this out. And then use this, the point of your brush to get into those corners. And then you can just kind of go along it and smooth it out. If you want to go this way, sometimes it's nice to kind of follow it. And I just got a little in there, but I can cover that up. So now I'm going to be doing, I'm going to go to the yellow orange. And I'm going to grab my cadmium red for this cadmium red medium and on the color wheel on both of these this is our yellow orange so again when we do yellow orange that means it's more yellow than orange uh, so it's not going to be your orange which is right there it's or your red orange it's going to be closer to more a brighter orange it's going to be a yellow orange. So I'm going to put down, and it should say here, for your yellow orange. Let me find it. Yellow orange. We're going to uh, be adding a little bit of the. That's not my cheat sheet. Let me find it. So many pages here. Okay. For our yellow orange, that's our tertiary, we're going to have yellow with a small amount of red. Now I knew that, but I wanted to show it to you on this handout. So I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium red, medium, and I'm going to put it over here because we're going to be mixing some other colors. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to put a little bit more down because I'm going to be painting the red area in as well. Now you're going to take your palette knife, set down my brush here for a second, I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to grab a little bit of this red. That may be too much. I'm going to take a little bit more away. So let me just show you on my palette knife. It's about that much. It's a little bit of red. Clean off my palette knife, and I'm going to grab. I'm going to take this because I can always use it to lay more yellow down in that area, and I'm going to mix this up. And in class, what I usually have the students doing is they're getting up out of their chairs and they're coming up and looking at the color wheels that I have in the classroom, uh, the one that I bought online, and the one that I created myself. Okay, so this still looks very yellow. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this. We're gonna start mixing that until we get there. Ooh, see that was just a little bit that I grabbed. A little bit can go a long way. So it's better to just grab a small amount than too much and be stuck with you know, just going back and forth and back and forth, trying to get the right color. And you want to mix it thoroughly. See, I'm scraping that up like that, and then I'm pressing down into the palette, 
and mixing that. You can go in a circle like this and then grab it like that and lay it and get it off the palette knife like that. So let's just see if we need to add a little bit more red here. I'm getting yellow all over the place. And uh, I do have painting uh, little stands for my paint brushes that they can be sitting in so they're not laying all over like that. Uh, but I don't have enough room on my table. So that looks, this is looking really good. It's very close to a yellow orange. I could always add a little bit more uh, yellow to it. So you can see here on this color wheel that if, you, if I add more yellow, it's going to get to, it's going to look like my, the color that I had before I added, when I first added red to it. So that's why I bumped it up to the yellow orange by adding a little bit more of that red. All right, we're going to move into the next area on the color wheel. I'm going to let that soak a little bit and rinse my brush out, get the yellow out of it. And now I'm going to add a little water in my brush, so I'm mixing that in there. Remember, it's watercolor paper, so it's a little bit textured. And uh, it doesn't get into that texture unless you just have a little bit of water added to your paint. If you add too much, it's going to become watercolor. It's going to become a translucent paint. We want this to be opaque. So here we go, yellow-orange. Oh, look at that. You can see my yellow-orange because I didn't erase it out. So what we do is we usually let this dry and you can put a second coat on. Uh, but this time I'm going to remember to erase my writing out of there. You don't want to get any of that in the paint either. So I'm just going to write here yellow, orange, yellow. And now this is our orange. So we're going to add a little bit more of this red, but let's make sure that we're following the instructions properly. So if this is our orange, we're going to be adding with more cadmium red added to it. So we're just going to get our palette knife. bit of this red because now that's going to be the dominant color in this mixture. You can kind of remember it by what what color comes first when you're saying it. It's not um, orange yellow, it's yellow orange. And I'm going to add a little bit more red to this because I can see that it's not enough. We just don't want it to become red. In retrospect, uh, you know, I think it would be nice to have a color wheel to work, you know, at home from you know, that you could order off the internet or buy it in the craft store, art store, but uh, you should be able to look on the computer and you could always kind of hold this up to it. If you can get a good true color, have your light up properly on your phone or on your, your laptop or your whatever monitor you're looking through. So uh, let's just take a look at that. So now that we have the orange, we're filling in the orange area here. The paper's popping up, so I'm going to hold it down. We're going to be moving on to the red-orange, and I'll be adding a little bit more red to that. And grab a little bit of this red. I'm going to take a little bit of that away from there. 
because I think I'm going to use that orange on the other side. And I think I need a little bit more red. Let's see how it looks with my red orange. It's looking good. I got a little bit too much water in my paintbrush and I dripped. And I just dab those up so I don't smear them. So this is a, a nice transition here so far. And then your cadmium red is gonna be just the paint, pure paint, just right out of your tube. Just like I did with the yellow. Uh, can you buy some of these colors already mixed up? Of course you can. There's a lot of colors you can be buying. Uh, you spend a little bit more money because you're buying those colors, uh, but the, you're mixing them so you learn how to mix colors. Once you learn how to mix them, if you want to buy a color already mixed for you, go for it. I just like to get buy some basics. There's some colors that I have trouble creating myself, um, and so I, I buy them. Some of those are like the magentas, really brilliant saturated hues that I like to use in my paintings. All right, I'm gonna switch now over to the yellow green, and I'm gonna clean up my brush and my, I'm going to get um, find another spot on my palette here. Get my paper towel damp here so I can wipe off my palette knife. You can see how that paint's starting to dry on there already. And I'm going to turn this and I'm gonna put some yellow down again. And what else am I using? So I'm gonna to go to this for my yellow green. That's, uh, so we got our yellow primary, and now we're going to our yellow green tertiary. We're gonna start with cadmium yellow with some phthalo green and a small amount of white. So I'm getting my titanium white, my uh, phthalo cyanide green, that's, this is, uh, yep, green. There we go. And then, uh, what else was it? My yellow. So I'm really having to, you know, look at these so I get this right. That's why I'm looking so much. All right, so we're going to start out with the cadmium yellow. And it says, with some phthalo green. Remember, we're not putting a lot of green down right now. It's, it's a yellow green. So I'm just, maybe I put maybe an eighth of a teaspoon down there and a small amount of white. So now we're starting to use white and I'm just gonna put a blob of white right there. Maybe that's a teaspoon or less off to the side. And I'm going to grab some of this yellow with my palette knife. Looks like I dipped it into the green a little bit. Oops. And a small, let's just grab a little bit of this green. Look at that, how bright that is. That was just a tiny amount of the green. but see how bright it is. It's almost like a neon, it's beautiful. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of that white. Let's see what that does. So 
So I have my color wheel right here. This looks a little bit darker. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this green. Thalocyanide green. And mix that up really well. It takes some patience, but it's really fun to watch these come to be, these colors come to be. I'm going to just grab a tiny bit more. You're probably noticing that I'm not cleaning my palette off, knife off in between, scooping every time. Uh, I don't usually do that uh, because it takes a lot of my paint off of my palette knife and it wastes it. So if you're kind of sneaky about it, you kind of just grab a little bit like that. You know, it's, it doesn't get into the other, the paint. Yeah, it does, but, um, it's okay. I mean, it's just a tiny bit that can get mixed into it. All right, this is getting nice and close and it's getting very uniform in its mixture, meaning it doesn't have little streaks of dark green in there, the thalo cyanide green. It's a little bit brighter, but uh, we're just gonna go with this because it's a nice bright yellow green and I like it. Uh, let's see how it looks with the one that I actually painted. And it's, let's just see. It's pretty close. It's just a little bit lighter. But it's a yellow green. It's a good yellow green. So I'm going to lay that down now. And this is important that you're watching this because, uh, you know, as tedious as it can be to watch sometimes, it's good to see how other people you know, how people mix this, because otherwise you're really on your own. Get those written in there real quick. Now you can see why you would have uh, written these on the outside. Let's get some of this yellow green. A little bit of water in there. All right, here I want you to see this right here. See how uh, right here there's still some orange paint in my brush? That's getting mixed into this. And this is why you really need to get work that paint out of your brush. really get stuck up in there, you know, if not even, you know, maybe even switching to a different brush. So I'm doing this to really work that out of there. Let's start on this again, grabbing that yellow green. Because if you start getting orange in there, you're going to start getting a different color. And we're doing that on the other side, the flip side of this. It's pretty... getting to the point where I'm going to need to change my water pretty soon too for rinsing out my brush. Anyway, so now we're going to be going moving over to green. Here's my green right here and let's find it on our project here, our little handout. This is our secondary color, so the tertiary was a uh, Yellow green was our tertiary. This is gonna be the phthalo green, which we just used with yellow and a small amount of white. So now we're flipping it. All right, so we've already got this green on, the, on our palette, and I'm gonna rinse this off. Get my palette washed off. Now we're going to be taking the green. See how it's got that kind of that nice, um, let me get my thalocyanide green. It has that blue to it. When you see the transparency of it, it has a blue shade to it. So that's why that's important. 
It's almost like a beautiful underwater blue. And I'm grabbing a little bit of this yellow and I'm going to add that to it. And then I believe I said a little bit of white. So a small amount of white. Question is, do I have enough of this color to fill that in? Doesn't look like it. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the green. I try to stay organized by having all of my, like my cool colors laying together. And then I always start making a huge mess of everything right away. Um, and my warm colors together. So I've got enough white and I've got enough yellow here, but I'm just going to start moving this around. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow. And a tiny bit of this white. It's too tiny. Let's get that mixed up. color wheel. Might be adding a little bit more white to this. Let's do a very small amount. Add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white. Ooh, that's too much. So a little bit like that. Brighten it up a little. Just grabbed a little bit more yellow. We don't want this to start looking like a yellow green. Or a blue green. Okay, this is looking like a good green right now. Just a little bit more yellow. So when I'm spreading it like that, you can really see the, you know, the color of it with the white palette paper coming through. And I'm going to call this close enough. Let's see how it looked on the one that I did some years ago. So it's pretty close. That's a good green. And uh, let me get my brush now. Let me try a different brush this time so you can see a little bit of some variety in brushes. Get a little water in there, just a little bit, so it's still creamy. Put my knife down. Get some nice colors here. And now we're going to fill this in. So I'm using my brush, the slanted flat. It's an angular brush, so it's kind of nice for coming along the edges like that. Pull away. We, got my, we want good coverage though. We don't want to see the paper coming through there. That adds more light to it, to the, the hue, and then it starts becoming transparent it lightens it up that white kind of mixes with it up from underneath now we're going to move on to our blue green and uh, it looks good so our blue green it's gonna be more blue than green so on here we have our blue green that's a tertiary that's our Thalo Blue Green Shade. So we do have an Ultramarine Blue that I had you buy, but we are using the Thalo Blue Green Shade with yellow and a tiny amount of white. So now we're gonna put some of this down on our palette. Get those soaking. 
and we're going to squeeze some of this out. And this is going to be a little bit of yellow added to this. And let's mix that before we add the white to it, just to get an idea of what this looks like, full intensity here. Let's flip it if you've got yellow on any other paint on the flip side of your palette knife. I, I think it's going to need a little bit... Well, let's grab some white first before we commit to more yellow. It's a little bit too much white. Too little is better than too much. Oh, that's going to be pretty. But I'm going to add a little bit more white to this. And a little bit more yellow. So we get that green, the blue-green going. But again, it's more blue than it is yellow or green, that is. Sorry. Okay, so now more white. Brighten this up a little bit. Let me get my blue green over here. It's a little bit more white. I can grab two of those. that away from my green so I don't start mixing those together. I'll mix something else. A little bit more white. Flip it, scrape it, and then mix it. Put my brush down so I can hold this up. I think that's good. I like that. All right. I'm going to grab my this brush again because the other one when I was using it went flying across my color wheel and it caused all this splattering here of colors so this must be my lucky brush today even though it's kind of falling apart on me these are those cheapy ones that you can get at Michael so again um, you get what you pay for uh, you can move up to better quality brushes as you become more acquainted with the medium just don't let it dry on your brush because these dry, as you know, on your brush and then you can't get it out. Beautiful. It's a beautiful color. All right, so now we're getting into the blue. That's one of our primary colors and we are going to be mixing the blue and that's going to be their ultramarine blue with the phthalo blue and a tiny amount of white so i've been using a lot of white here i'm going to put some more down here and i think i'm going to uh grab a new palette uh well, i can move this around but i do need to clean my water so i'll be right back all right i, I went and i changed my water and i got a new palette so i'm ready to mix up some more colors and the next one that I'm going to be doing is the blue. That's one of our primary colors. And if you refer to the handout, the blue right here is going to be ultramarine blue with the phthalo cyanide blue and a tiny amount of white. So here's the two that I'll be using and I'm going to be mixing them to get to this blue right here. So uh, I want it to be a nice bright blue if I grab this you can see there's that blue right here it's a little bit different it almost looks like my blue violet here's the blue violet there 
and so on. So I just need to add a little bit more white to that this time. And let's grab, since this is first on the list, this is my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to get some of this phthalo blue. Let's get those mixed together. I have more of the uh, ultramarine blue than the phthalo. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that white. And let's mix that and see what we get. Don't want it really, really dark. We want a nice primary blue. Get it thoroughly mixed, flip your knife over. And I'm going to grab my color wheel. Let's see how that looks. It's a little bit darker. just change the color by adding it on there. <laughs> I'm going to grab a little bit more white. Don't get impatient and add too much white to it. Because I'm going to be remixing more than you are right now. All right, let's see, that looks good. I could always add a little bit more white, but I want this to be have a little bit more of an intensity to it um, so it doesn't start looking like a, a tint. It feels like a nice blue right there to me. All right, that's a nice bright blue. So now we're moving on to blue violet. And that's a tertiary. And that's gonna be the phthalo blue with acra. Okay, we know which one it's really called, but I can pronounce acra easier. The acra blue violet. Now known as the quinacridone blue violet. And we're gonna be adding a little bit of a uh, small amount of white to that. So let me get the, some more phthalo blue on my palette. Yeah, there they are, I'm hiding things from myself. So we'll put some of this down. Yeah, there's my white over there. And what does it say again? Acre blue violet, the violet, oh, blue violet. Going to that. I turn this around. Thalo blue with acro blue violet. So let me grab this. And since that's our blue violet, we want it to be more blue than have this reddish because violet, you know, or purple is red and blue mixed together. Okay, so let's get some of that. To see what the uh, violet is going to be the acro blue with ultramarine. Okay, I can see that. All right, so here we go. I'm going to mix this and then let's add a little bit of this. And I'm going to grab some of that white so I can really start seeing what this is supposed to look like. But this is going to be our blue violet. Let me grab the color wheel again here. There's the blue violet right there. I'm going to grab a tiny bit more of this. Color. And then I'm going to get some of that white in here and then that should really start showing us what we've got.
Otherwise it's so dark it's difficult to see. So that's why we want to add a little bit of that white in there. It really brings that color forth. And so just looking at this and moving it around a little bit, um, I, and you can see the, the, the uh, color of it on the palette here, and then I'm kind of comparing it here. I really feel like I need a little bit more of the Quina Crydrone or the Acra. <laughs> I've already explained that whole thing there, so you know that if I say Acra, you know which one I'm referring to. It's the Quina Crydrone. All right, that's starting to look like a blue-violet to me. Maybe a little bit more. Just throw the whole thing in there. Okay, for me, it's almost like a, it's getting to be almost a 50-50 combination here. I'm still not satisfied. And it may just be that I need a little bit more of the blue, but I don't think so. It really absorbs it. a finicky one. I'm going to go with that. But it does start out with blue, so it's more blue. And then we're going to be going over to violet. And now we're going to be doing the violet. And uh, so that's going to be a secondary color. And I'm going to be adding Acro Blue Violet or the Quinacrydrone to uh, have, we're using that one first, and then we're going to add the Ultramarine Blue to that with a tiny amount of white. Quinacrydrone. If anybody knows how to say that properly, please uh, tell me. And then I'm getting, um, this is just a tiny amount of, wait, this is a, the ultramarine blue. So this was my ultramarine blue right here. I remember that. Sometimes I forget which ones they are. And then I have to like look at the tube or get a little bit out of the tube. And uh, all right, so let's go grab some of this and bring it back over here. And uh, I've still got paint on the back of my palette, so I'm going to wipe that off. What happens when you're rushing on camera. And so we've got this, and we're going to add a little bit of this. Let's see what we get from this, and a little bit of some white. This is a tiny amount of white. So I'm going to just, that looks like a little bit too much. So there's a tiny amount of white. Let's see what pretty color we get from that. And let me just grab my color wheel here because we are doing the violet now. I've got a little bit more white than they have there. And I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. That might darken it up a little bit. We don't want it to get too blue. That's pretty. So remember the blues and the, the violets, the blue greens and the greens, those are cool colors. All right, so I've got that mixed up and I will be putting that down on my color wheel next. We're going to be doing the red violet now and that's a tertiary, and we're going to be taking the Quinacrydrone. 
with a, t uh, with a tiny amount of white. Let's just lay that down. And I'm avoiding the area where I had grabbed it with the blue that was on my palette knife. And I'm just grabbing a little bit of this, even less, like that. And I'm going to mix that together. And I can always add a little bit more white to get to our red violet. Don't try adding the red to it because it could muddy it up. That cadmium red might muddy this up a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to grab my uh, the original that I was doing, and that's pretty close to my red violet. Set that off, and then I would I, I'm going to paint this in. And then the last one is going to be our red, and all that you're going to use for that, I don't even need to mix it, that'll be right out of the tube, and that's going to be your cadmium red medium. Now we're going to be moving on to working with the primary colors to create our value scale.